I'm now very pleased to introduce our friend and colleague, Dr. Thomas Daniels, who has come to us from Rush University, where I believe he was a medical student and an intern, then went to the Mecca of Mayo Clinic Rochester to do his radiation oncology residency, where I believe he was chief resident. So we are very pleased to have Dr. Daniels with us. He is an expert in proton therapy and pediatric radiation and lung cancer is one of those many participants that Dr. Swanson mentioned at our lung cancer thoracic uh, tumor board every week. And he is going to talk to us about stereotactic body radiation therapy and anything else radiation that he wants to. Dr. Daniels. So I'm going to be talking about stereotactic body radiation therapy for lung cancer. Um, I have nothing to disclose. I'm going to start off here with a little bit of a history lesson first. Um, uh, this was the f ostensibly the first patient treated with a linear accelerator uh, with uh, for external beam radiation. This was a young child with a retinoblastoma who'd lost one eye already, and they decided to give it a shot with radiation. Um, 1950-something. Um, prior to this, there was still technology that was spent around, and I guess it's still used in some centers for skin cancer where they have a live radiation source. But here the machine is generating the radiation. Uh, we didn't have CT-based planning for a, a while. This is uh, uh, pictures from a, just an x-ray, and they would essentially draw blocks. You can see that both bilateral superglicular fields are being treated here. Um, this uh, might have been a stage 3A lung cancer that radiation oncologists are still treating before the surgeons start taking, uh, taking a crack at them. Uh, one of the things that was used initially for shaping radiation fields was something called Cerebin blocks. So you'd have somebody working away in a block room. Every old department has a block room. We've got one over at uh, Scottsdale, and there used to be a block cutter who uh, block cutters have since been uh, transported into um, transportation engineers moving patients in and off the floor because we don't really need the Cerebend blocks anymore, but these used to be mounted on the machine head like this to shape the beam. A linear accelerator um, from, I'm guessing this one's about 20 years old, you can see where this would be mounted on the, uh, onto the machine head right here. Uh, and things still kind of look like this, but they're a little spark more sparkly now. We've replaced Cerebend blocking with, um, with multi-leave collimators. So now we have these, these little leaves that can slide in and out of the radiation field uh, to block that. Those are mounted in the machine head. Each one of them has a little motor. Uh, this one you can see they're smaller in the middle and they get bigger. So you can get a, um, uh, if you're having the patient on the table, you can have a field size of about 40 centimeters by 